Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is How to Make an RPG in Unity and welcome to episode 12. So this episode we're going to carry on exactly where we left off last time with the functionality of our sword, our weapon, and we'll be adding in a script to command us to swing the sword and we'll also add in a couple of extra scripting that we'll need to stop any bugs and errors occurring. So first things first, let's take a look at our settings for the keys. So if we go to edit, go to project settings and then on input, and we've already dealt a little with this and how the keys work in the game. But what we need to look at in this particular one is Fire 1. So if we click the arrow next to Fire 1, it's called Fire 1, we can see that the positive button, so the button we can use, is going to be left control or mouse 0, which is actually the left mouse button. So what we need to do is remember this name of Fire 1. That is going to be used to swing our sword. So let's set up the script. So in our scripts folder, Let's right click, create, C sharp script, and we'll call this swing sword. And open up in Modern Develop or Visual Studio. And all we really need to do here is allow the script to recognize that we're pressing our button, but we also need to have a sword status. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of void start and any notes in the script that we don't need. And first variable is going to be the sword itself. So public game object, and we'll call it the sword semicolon. And the second one, public, it's going to be an integer because we're going to have about three different sword statuses. And we'll just call it sword status semicolon. So the way this is going to work is in void update, we need to have an if statement that's checking if we're pressing the attack button, which is fire one, and if the sword status is equal to zero, and if it is, then we start a coroutine. So let's start with that routine. So we do I enumerator, and it's because we're going to uh, wait for a certain amount of seconds, and we'll call it swing sword. Swing sword function we'll call it open close bracket open curly bracket let's go down a few lines and close curly bracket just to turn i enumerator blue so we know everything we do here is within this particular section so the first thing we're going to want to do is when we press the button is to change our sword status to one so this status is going to mean that we've just started to swing our sword and halted any further action so sword status equals one semicolon and what we'll do is we will then play the animation in the sword. So we need the sword dot get component and in spiky brackets animation open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes we need to put the name of the animation that is on our sword. So if we go to FPS controller, click down and then to first person character Let's go to the Elven Sword and we can see the animation that we recorded last time is called Elven Sword Anim. So we need to put that there. Elven Sword Anim. And then semicolon. So remember, if you called it, for example, just Sword Anim, you would have put just that Sword Anim here. So whatever the animation is called, it turns it orange here. So then after that, what we're going to do is set the sword status to number two. And this means it's playing the animation. So sword status equals two, semicolon. Now what we have to do is we have to wait before we can do anything else. And the animation itself, so if we click on the animation and go to animation tab, we can see that the animation is 60 frames. So it's exactly one second long. So we have to wait for one second. So what we'll do is we will do yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and in brackets we'll do 1.0f. So we're waiting for one whole second there. And then hopefully you guys may have caught on what's going to happen here. We need to change the sword status back to zero. So sword status equals zero semicolon. So the reason we change it back to zero is because the next bit that we write can actually function correctly. So in the void update, we need to do if input dot get 
button down and in brackets and quotes it's called fire one and what we need to do is put a double ampersand because we need to have an and possibility here because we can't have one or the other it has to be both sword status equals and that is a double equal to zero close bracket and open curly bracket we need to start that coroutine called swing sword function so we do start co routine and in brackets swing sword function open close bracket close bracket semicolon and then close curly bracket and you can see hopefully everything has now turned blue and black and orange for the names hopefully nothing is red so save that script and let's head back to unity so what we need to do is we need to attach that script to the sword itself so back to our scripts folder and on the sword drag and drop swing sword and then we just need to quickly set the actual sword as itself there so let's save our project file and let's turn off play automatically in the animation and now let's press play so we have our sword and hopefully when we press the left mouse button we can swing our sword accordingly now obviously the uh, animation is and not so good because I rushed it last time. Hopefully you guys have got better animation. And guys, I'd like to actually see how yours is looking at this point. Because I always like to see how well people are doing from these tutorials. And it's great to see what people do. And if they need help or anything. So now we've got our, so our sword uh, swinging. But what we really need to do at this point. Because if we go over here and look at the message board. We can actually kind of swing it through. So one clever thing that we can do at this point is to create another script which blocks attacks at certain points. So the idea of an attack blocker is we have uh, a script which monitors things all the time. And basically, if something becomes active, it says we can't attack, then it means that we just cannot attack. So to do that, we'll call this script attack blocker. There we go. And let's open that up in MonoDevelop or Visual Studio. So this script itself is going to have a, a static variable. So we will get rid of start and any notes because, again, we don't need them. So we do public static because it needs to be accessed from other scripts. It's going to be an integer, again, because we have a different status number each time. So it could be 0, it could be 1, 2, 3. It just depends on the possibilities. Now, people ask, why don't you use a bool for this? Well, it's because there could be certain instances where we can possibly attack. So that would be a status 2, status 3. We're just kind of future-proofing our scripts using it this way. And we'll call it block sword, semicolon. And I'm just going to do an internal version of this so we can see it in the inspector panel. So public int internal block semicolon and all void update is going to contain is internal block equals block sword semicolon. And what we'll do is this script itself, when we save it, we will attach to a of the object down here will attach it to global stat object because technically it's a stat so we'll attach it to there and we can see the internal block number right there so next thing we need to do is in the quest over here so when we're looking at this quest board we don't want to be able to attack so we need to go to um, quest folder and it should be quest 001 take that we need to go into so what we're going to do here is we're going to change attack blocker to um, stop us attacking if we're there. So in quest 001 take on mouse over, what we need to do is if the distance is less than three. So after we've set or rather before we set these two texts, what we need to do is put attack blocker dot block sword equals one semicolon 
and what we also need to do is inside um, here so get button down action so once we press the button to take the actual quest we need to change it again so attack blocker dot block sword equals two so we'll have two as the function where we're not actually on the game itself we're kind of off it looking at the um, quest itself so then finally on mouse exit first thing we need to do in that is set block sword back to zero so attack blocker dot block sword equals zero semicolon and save that there so i'm hoping at this point guys you may have cottoned on to what exactly is going to happen in our swing sword script so what's going to happen is we need to put in another and statement within this first if function so although it says if button down our button is down and our sword status is zero we also need to put and attack blocker dot block sword equals that's double equal zero and save that script so what is effectively happening here is if we walk over here and look at our board we won't be able to attack because when we look at it it's going to set it to number one so because our internal block sorry our block sword is set to one and it needs to be set to zero to actually function the swing it's not going to happen but when we look away from the board it sets the block sword to zero so let's give this a go so if we go over here we can swing as normal but if we go over here to look at our board we can no longer swing but if we look away we can swing so this is uh, as i say it's quite handy in places where for example if you're looking at an npc and you don't want to be able to swing your sword because you might kill the npc which is something that we'll deal with uh probably next couple of tutorials because we'll be doing npcs and enemies and everything really soon so this kind of function comes in handy to stop the sword actually hitting something that it shouldn't hit so lastly what i'm going to do is turn the sword off and when we turn it off it also disables the swing sword script so we won't have any problems anyway when we come to do it so the game as it is as it starts is all good now so if we click nothing would happen but we can still take our quest so we've taken it and basically as soon as we pick up that sword we're able to start swinging and you can set that uh, sword blocker on pretty much any object at all as long as you have um, the right mechanics in place which we do there we go so we have our sword and we can swing away so you can see everything is coming together quite nicely in this game now we have a world we have a weapon we have a quest so what we're going to do is next episode we are going to look at creating some fade screens we're going to look at cameras we'll add in a cutscene to the beginning of our game and we'll add in some artistic ui so we'll be using some fonts and then from there what we're going to do is start creating some enemies and some experience and we're going to really turn it into an rpg in the next couple of episodes and it's going to be a lot a lot of fun to do a lot of fun coding and playing around with animations and just generally playing in unity so guys until that next episode thank you very much for watching